Sorry, guys, just still setting up a little bit. <clears throat> Anyone that's actually watching it. Alrighty. And just setting up some music for me to listen to while I'm playing. Now I can see my chat, pulling up my blue stacks, so that way I can use a higher quality camera for um, showing you guys things. <clears throat> this is basically an emulated tablet on my computer for any of you that don't know. Uh, I've been adjusting my mic volume so that way you guys aren't picking up too much extra noise so let me know when you guys can hear me fine that's kind of why i'm doing this stream as a uh, test run that way i can adjust it for you guys so let's do levels how about now Okay. Uh, if need be, I can turn it up more. So just let me know. Let's go ahead and pull up Torba. Boop. And there's definitely a little bit of lag, obviously, between my live stream and uh, me doing anything. So I do apologize. Now let's just take a look and see what people are playing. Oh, I know, Swirly Art. You're fine. Oh, yeah. That camera quality is so much better than what my phone has and definitely a lot better than what the uh, web player has. Definitely can tell the difference between someone watching... Or someone using a phone or tablet, especially when it's got more power in it. Uh, looks like whoever was playing has decided they don't want to play anymore, so we'll take a look at what else is going on. Is there any prizes anyone wants to uh, specifically watch for? We can see what kind of tables they have. I know everybody is always after All Might right now. Ah, uh, there's another odd angle one. Man, those claw tips are fairly straight. In this instance, it'd probably be best for him to offset to the right and try and get this forward corner here. Looks like his best point of leverage <clears throat> I also thought I'd pull up some links to some helpful tools for you guys on my web browser as well We'll see how many viewers we end up with, and then we'll go over that. I 
There's that cushion I tried for her in my one video yesterday. Oh, and there's Ghibli buttons. Six types random prize. <laughs> So let's go ahead and go to figures. There's always someone trying for a figure. Looks like that one's restocking. We'll see if they continue to play it. Oh wow, that's a good setup. I haven't seen one of those since Sega. In this instance, I would just push on that corner. You've already got a good chunk of it over the uh, over the ledge. And these are just little plastic bendable um, with they could be ABS or uh, rubber tipped. Uh, basically, it's just to annoy you. Curious to see what this person's gonna do. There's four people waiting, so. Ah, we got some movement. Looks like they're going to try and pull. And that's the problem with trying to pull. You're not going to get a lot of movement on these uh, type of platforms. So, yeah, I would say this is probably rubber, uh, the rubber version of this. Uh, it's like a stiffer rubber, too, making it a lot more annoying. <clears throat> yeah, in these instances, because it's already over something, I would push on that corner specifically for the fact that you're going to get more results out of pushing with something like this. And the fact that it goes down all the way to beneath the prize is a really good tool. Another thing is, is when you're playing on this kind of a table, pushing in general might be a better approach just because you might get that springy backlash. So, Oh, there we go. Got that good arm closing strength. They just give it a little love tap to the right and got it in. Yeah, you can see these have been bent all kinds of different directions. Not bad, not bad. Let's go see what else everyone are play is playing after. Oh wow, that's an older prize. It's from Fall. These are always the putts because you can never guarantee how far they're going to go down. Usually they just go down and far enough to get to the plastic. That way you can't really do anything too crazy like try and lift it from the back end or anything. I would say it's actually another one of those situations where pushing would be a better option. curious to see what this person will do in this situation. They've already got one prize that's pretty well off. It looks like the starting position was back here on this D-ring, so. Normally I would say go for the one that's already at an odd angle. But because so much of it's still on the bar and on the platform, it's probably not your best bet. Unless you can actually get in between those two plastic Ds and then uh, kind of pull it so that it's a little more straight. Then that might be a little bit better. This person's either charging or taking a very long time to think about what they want to do. 
Never hurts to hit that charge button just to buy yourself a little bit more time. And just so you guys know, there's some really great tools out there for trying to uh, figure out how to approach things. TorbaPrizeWatcher.com, you can view all the replays. See if anyone's even won that prize on that table. You just find whatever prize you want to go after. It'll go through its little poll for their database of replays, and then boom. Uh, sometimes you'll actually have to hit replay, not... It typically goes to different machine configurations beforehand. And then it's got to pull everything. So, like, All Might. No, let's do, uh... Sure, Dragon Ball. And then I can go to the Dragon Ball page and see who all's won these. Takes a little time to populate, so keep that kind of thing in mind. But then you can see what the replay looks like for these. See how they won. Kind of give you a good grasp. See if anyone one shot at a prize. So. I will need to start doing more videos on plushies there. Skittles. And uh, I will eventually here. So, this is a great tool for you guys. This is also a great tool if you're just trying to find a specific type of machine. So if you're like looking for ping pong ball machines, you can see what's all in the ping pong balls or capsules, so on and so forth. I'm just going to see if this person manages anything in the next one or two moves, and then I think we'll switch to a different table. We'll go to the uh, plushies for you Skittles. For plushies, it's usually dependent on what the configuration is and whether or not they're in a plastic wrapper. Sometimes the plastic wrapper is easy depending on the configuration. And then sometimes it makes it that much more difficult. Like the V-bar in a plastic, that is super annoying. Unless it goes down far enough to hook underneath the plastic and then lift it or scoot it. Excuse me. Wow. Something they also probably really want to pay attention to is these bars are, or these arms are a little bent forward as well as offset from each other a little bit. Making it that much harder to lift or move. Well, welcome back, Christy T. I don't know if you missed out. I can go back over anything that I've talked about it any point in time. Just kind of seeing how this person's approaching this. Looks like uh, they're either having some sort of technical issue trying to go backwards or something. Or they're just failing epically. One of the two. If they're having technical issues, I hope they send an inquiry for it using the replay. Yeah, that's what I was saying is I would expect them to poke it because it's got plastic on it. Um, I would poke it in this region if possible. Yeah, it looks like they're having issues with their machine. I hope they stop playing and wasting their money and submit inquiries to get that fixed. It doesn't look like it's going backwards. 
plushies, huh? Plushies, plushies, plushies. Any particular prize you guys would like to see? Yeah, trust me, Christy, I, I know exactly what you mean. It is definitely painful to watch some people play. Any prize you guys want to see? No? Lord knows we saw enough of the uh, little twin stars yesterday. Nyanko Sensei, huh? Let's take a look and see what they got. Let's take a look here. So that's a plastic on two bars. That one's platform. That's an interesting one because there's no side protection. That seems like a pretty easy configuration. But what they probably did is they probably got some invisible grip tape in the center on underneath making it that much more difficult to move. I'm not sure though. Let's see what this config looks like. This one was very popular when the, um, what was it, Charizard and those guys came out. Oh, I just popped my neck. It felt great. Hmm. Oh, wow. That is a um, big cushion. I wonder how big that is. 46 centimeters. Wow. For anyone that wants to try and go after this. I would try and pull to the left and hook around the ear. That's just my opinion. Especially with these kinds of prizes, that's going to get you the most movement. Big fluffy rolling Nyankos. Oh man, they're so close to touching the crane on this one. I love it when you can get the uh, prize at an angle pretty easily to... Uh, have it be in the way of the crane. And then when it either resets or when you're pushing it backwards, you can get that easy win. Hmm. That's a really odd angle and a really garbage setup. Even though the bars are really wide because of the plastic and everything, it makes it very difficult to get movement out of this kind of situation. Um, doesn't look like there's anyone playing much of the Nyanko ones. Let's take a look at Gloomy. Let's see if I can spell today, though. Um, I don't even think the crane goes up high enough for this to be triable. I do wish they would put an easy indicator on how far the claw goes up. I've seen it on one or two tables where they will, they'll put a line down the platform and that's as far as it'll go. I wish they would do that for every ramp setup. Oh, looks like someone's on this table. Wow, look at that whitewashing right there. That is bright. Especially with a white prize. Hmm. Definitely seems intentional to me. Looks like this person's just trying to hook around the corner. Looks like decently strong claw. I would probably go to the far right and try and get the ear off because more of the back of it is off the back bar than the front.
you should refuse to play with camera lighting like that. And on, honestly, what I would do is, um, oh, wow, that was really grippy around the ear. <clears throat> um, what I would also do is send in an inquiry, even if you don't play the table or don't have a replay, because that can be um, beneficial to other players and yourself. I've actually done that once and gotten TP back when I didn't play, so it's pretty trippy. Oh, they're so close. That back end is going to get them, though. That is a fairly strong claw, though. If anyone's after the white with blue, I'd definitely try this configuration. I'm curious to see what the reset position looks like. So, they may do it to make it more difficult for you, yes. But they also are dumb. So you gotta remember, Torba's been going through a high hiring phase, so there's a lot of newbies. Um, there was a nice phase during December, I want to say it was. <coughs> In December, they had a bunch of newbies that were just straight up tossing the prizes on, haphazardly and everything. It was... It was pretty brutal. You could tell it was like a phase of everything. It seemed they went through some sort of training afterwards because it stopped happening quite as much. I would push at this instance, probably. They've got so little of the plastic on the uh, back bar. Pushing would probably be better on the uh, back of the head. Right around here. That would get you the most leverage. So, And it would force it more on the back end to go this way. Come on, you guy, you got this. Ah, nice. Oh. oh, that's bad. That's annoying. I mean, they'll be able to push exactly the same way they did on the side and get some pretty good leverage as well. Um, if you notice that claw right there, that arm is a little bit more bent than the other one is. Usually those ones don't open as much, and those ones are better meant for pushing. Uh, looks like they're going to try and push with the right claw. Let's see how that goes for them. Uh, not so good. Bounced a little bit, and uh, yeah, they didn't end up with as much leverage. I would probably do what they did last time and push with that left claw. Ooh, ooh, oh. oh, that was so close. This is a really strong claw. I will definitely say this is a very strong claw. Anyone that's wanting to win one of these, I would definitely go and play this table. Uh, I don't know what table it is, so you'll just have to find it again. They just need another good push in there. Uh, too far off to the right, though. Struggling with that lighting, I'm sure. Makes it super difficult. Thank you, Kamori Dragon, for subscribing. Oh, this could be it. I think they're about the right area. Yeah, there we go. Definitely a good player. They were just facing some mechanical issues with this over-brightening the uh, table camera. That was less painful than some of the other ones I've watched, to be honest with you. Um... I watched someone dump at least $200 into a prize, what was it, uh, like four days ago? It was, it was extremely painful to watch. Yes, $200. I kid you not. I was sitting there counting after a while, and that was only the time that I was watching them. Um, it was something newer. 
trying to remember. Let's take a look and see if we can figure, find what it was. Just out of curiosity. <laughs> that was definitely, it's someone that really just needed to learn to give up. I actually have one of these. <laughs> Hologram Snoopy. I would definitely win one of these and just throw it at kids. Be like, I'm just passing the world on to you. I'm pretty sure it was one of the mochis, like the uh, prize was a mochi material, and they were just struggling with that so hard, but they would not give up. Uh, the person with the Gude Tama on his head is actually an older prize that they are recycling. Um, a while back, I actually had someone request it for me if I saw it. Uh, Jin, he's a uh, popular uh, character in Japan, I believe it is. Yeah, if you have a computer that's worth it to try and run, I would definitely do blue stacks versus other things. Just because, I mean, if you already have the power on your computer, definitely worth using. Who doesn't want a huge lobster hugging pillow? I have all three of these in multiples. The turtles are so soft. The turtles I was winning for like 600 yen. Was it? I want to say it was a squid. Yeah, I think it might have been a different configuration, but I'm pretty sure it was a squid that someone sunk a ton of money into. I don't think it was the reversible ones, though. I think it was the ones with the tentacles. It was one of those limited tables, and it was just, oh man, they sunk so much money into it, it made me want to cry. Prizes that are hanging by the bars. I don't personally like those configurations, especially with the lag that you typically experience with some Torba tables, as well as other mechanical issues. Also, my phone's a POS, so. But we can take a look. Uh, if I were a guessing man, the ones that are usually hanging by bars are usually loppies. It's pretty much their favorite configuration for loppy bunnies. Not that one. Those are 10 centimeter, 27.42. No. Nope. Oh, my jaw just popped. That was lovely. Ping pong ball. Oops. That's a 10 centimeter. Those are always weird. Hmm. Well, that's cute. Loppy bunny earmuffs. Hmm. Too bad winter's over pretty much. 
I mean, for the most part. I know some areas are still cold. Huh. Normally I see loppy bunnies with those kinds of configurations. It looks like not this time around. Rilakkuma marble. I'll take a look at Rilakkuma. For those of you that don't know, Rilakkuma uh, Kuma literally translates to bear in Japanese. I'm not quite sure what Rilla means off the top of my head. Marble. That one's in a plastic bag. Making sure I'm not missing one here. There's one. That's okay, I live in Japan and all it does is get cold over here unless you're up in the northern area like Hokkaido. Oh, that's a fun configuration. I'm just waiting for Mount Fuji to open and uh, go hike it again. Oh, wow. Someone left it like this. Okay, never mind. Someone's still playing. I would definitely be approaching going after the neck on this real quick. That's definitely going to be your best leverage, especially with those wide scoops. Um, your other option would be to go towards the forward part of the head where the ear is. I would just love tap it and then go right to where the ear is and yank it off. Nice, Ash. Ugh. This person's painful to watch. They need to go, stop going so far forward. I do wish that there was a staff help button or a button to ask them to reset the prize. Thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Oh, that's... Oh, no, no, no. Don't do that. Well, you might at least get underneath the prize. But you're going to more likely pull it back onto the platform that way. There you go. That's better. Right there. Do that one more time, dude. You got this. Honestly, I would try pushing or or pulling it. Just love tap to the right and then hook right in that neck right now at this point. He's got enough weight over the edge that with just a little bit more, it'll, it should just fall. Marumofu... Yori. I'm not aware of that character, um, Skittles, and that's a mouthful to try and pronounce. <laughs> mm. Oh man, that was painful. Now they got a, uh, they got to lift the head. Uh, I would hook right where the uh, head is, or I would push one of the two. Going for the neck would not necessarily be the best at this point, but it might work. Nope, nope, nope. They need to go more up to where the ear is, or go more to the right, so that way they can get up underneath the head. They just gotta kind of tilt it over. That's the big thing. Come on, man. You got this. Yeah, Ash. Let me know if you hop on. Be awesome to have someone in the chat that's actually going to win this. 
Oh, they need to go farther to the left. That or they need to go full right so that way they can lift it right where the ear is on the right side. They love tap in, just go to that, then they'll be better, but we'll see what happens. Oh, oh. That might be it. There we go. Sorry, Ash. Well, it doesn't look like any of the um, marble Rillacumas are hanging by their feetsies on a bar or anything. I do wish that they would have um, a table sorter. Like you could go to plushie and then drop down a menu and then select the type of table you'd be on. That would be lovely. Hmm. What else is commonly dangling from uh, its feet on a bar? Definitely not going to be a Nessoberry plushie. Uh, they change what they're doing all the time, so. Miku's not typically on a, um, on a bar setup. Usually it's in a center platform with uh, barriers on the sides where her head is in the center. It's the most common setup I see for her if she's not in a plastic bag on a uh, bar setup. Uh, those are 15 centimeters, so they probably won't be too small. Lucario, huh? Let's take a look. Oh, wow. That first table. They could probably just poke his head right there and get him in. Um, I don't know. It depends on how wide it opens. If they give it a love tap, it might be close enough to the edge. But um, they may have to go all the way over enough to approach it from the left side. Or the, sorry, the right side with the left arm. Are you talking about this machine, David? Hmm. Frankly, if it's in this configuration, if it's got enough lift or if it hooks onto the plastic itself, I would try and throw it forward. Basically, you would want to hook it in this area right about here. And try and lift it so that it goes into this area. <laughs> that second prize is going to screw them might be easier to win the second prize and then go for the uh, A prize. Well, B prize, but left one. You know what I love about Japan? Fresh pineapple. Mm-mm. Ooh, that is a good push. I would do that exact same thing again. It got a decent bit down. And that rocking motion will kind of shimmy it down between the bars. I agree. Bars are definitely wider, closer to the camera than they are farther from the camera. 
you can kind of see this one's at a bit of an angle here. That could just be them being shoddy on their install work. This person's other option would be to get the right arm around the uh, right prize and try and push with the left arm. They're going for the love tap and then push. There we go. Nice. Very good. That person definitely knew what they were doing. I wonder if they're going to continue and try and go for the other one or not. He looks pretty soft. I won three of these the other day. I'm waiting for them to come in in a day or two here. I would definitely recommend this site for anyone that's, you know, getting used to all this stuff still, too. Doesn't look like they're going to continue, and they're restocking the prize. I don't know how useful this how to play guide is, but um, yeah, this website is useful for other things. So um, another thing for you guys to be aware of, if you're kind of looking for specific prizes, if you go to bpnavi.jp on Google Chrome and have it set to auto translate like mine does, you can actually see the prizes and the dates that they're coming out on. What do they mean on the bottom that's scrolling? Let's take a look. Let's open a uh, new table. Oh, looks like my Torba crashed. Sorry, guys. That is one problem with BlueStacks, so that's the only thing I would warn you guys against when using BlueStacks. Don't know why I have Summoner's Wars on here. Or Pokemon Go. Cannon Kirby, huh? I'll have to see what configurations they have. Let's reopen Torba here. Evening, WJU. Or should I say, Wuzhu. Alrighty. Kirby. Would help if I clicked in the right area, huh? Um, so normally I would say this is a fairly good configuration, but the problem with this is that Kirby's round, so that could be a little bit of a issue. The plastic will kind of stop some of that rolling, but your problem isn't going to be with him rolling because that would actually kind of be a good aspect. It's going to be with the aspect of um, trying to pull a round prize. You might get the claw around the arm pretty well. Um, and also, obviously, it's going to matter how far up the ramp it'll let you go. I would imagine it's probably not going to let you pass this point. So um, That disclaimer is specifically for display prizes. So when if you were here in Japan, right? You can actually win the display prizes. Some some arcades will have little stickers and signs saying, you know, display prizes are not for winning. But that being said, if it falls in the chute, you can scoot. So you can just grab it and run. No one's going to typically stop you. I have won a few display prizes, like a uh, Ukami noodle stopper uh, that actually just flung forward when I was trying to do something else and landed in the chute and uh, some other things. So... 
you can actually do that in Japan live in an arcade. And sometimes I've actually used that as a tactic to win things like Larvitar. Um, I just shake the uh, metal E claw around until it smacked the uh, Larv Larvitar on the back display and fell off the shelf and into the hole. So. see what other configurations they've got for Kirby here. Uh, I would avoid this configuration above all else. So number one, it's almost all the, the larger opening is already closer to where the claw is. Um, so you're going to have very little leverage points anyways. It's a round prize, so you're not going to get very much leverage to begin with, uh, especially with those claws being as straight as they are and I'm going to assume that the claw only goes down just a little bit farther than the prize. Do you remember what table it was on that uh, we saw that other disclaimer then? Um, but it, again, I, if I was to approach this, I would offset to the right and try and lift the back end. Um... Uh, I think we were watching the Rilakkuma marble plushie when someone asked, and apparently I can't spell Rilakkuma, so. Uh, they didn't ban me, no, they just removed the link. They asked me not to advertise in there. Apparently they have a thing against uh, advertising. And I can kind of understand that. Uh, if the other one that they were talking about is this one right here, you cannot obtain a prize by knocking down a side if one side has already fallen. Then um, this is probably something that they started back when the Shenron plushie was in the uh, Crane Arcade. Back when the Shenron plushie was around, you only had to knock down one side. Looks like this camera or this machine is having a seizure. Um, believe it or not, this is actually a win for this person if it is what I think it is. If they send in an inquiry because it's stuck on the claw, they can actually win that prize. Um, so, yeah, during the Shenron uh, plushie time, they... Um, they made it so that all you had to do was knock one side of the Shenron off of the platform onto the uh, area to win it. And that was because he's just so long and so narrow. So that's probably something to contradict that. So that way we're not trying to uh, claim it's a win because it worked on one other prize. Mm, if it's kicking you out... Because you're trying to get in line, it, I would say the whole table is probably glitchy. Um, if someone sends in an inquiry on it, that would probably be the best thing to do. Hopefully the person that's playing sent in one. Um, another thing that they have encountered is where uh, one side of the prize will be in the win area, and then the other side of it will be resting against the bar if it's like a really tall prize. Um, some arcades consider that a get, some do not. So you're kind of at 50-50 on that one. Is this the one that you guys were talking about? Or are you talking about more of the other one? I would say this is actually probably pretty easy if there's a decent amount of push. All they have to do is uh, push on the hat or right where the lip of the hat is to get the most leverage. And then um, push him through. I don't know if this is the best because I don't know if this is the um, reset position. I would guess it is because of how they've got the display going. Uh, by the way, that is a bungee cord that he that's attached to him, so it's a little springy. <laughs> it's a trap. Those are some pretty flat um, 
crane tips, so that would actually be ideal for pushing. Right now, this would be my recommendation, but I haven't seen anyone play it yet. Oh, it's a trap, huh? I'll have to wait and see if someone actually plays it at some point. Um, until then, let's take a look at what other configurations we've got. I am getting a little tired of them charging 3,000 TP for new prizes, though. I wish that they would go back to their old prize uh, prices. Um, I would say avoid this one, specifically because he's just he's too round in that packaging. Anything that's too sloped on the packaging is definitely um, going to give you more problems. So, um, if I were to try to approach this, keep in mind, I'm just giving you ideas on things. So, um, the left tip is, a, is almost entirely straight. The claw itself is, the arm is a little bent more. So, that side is probably more meant for poking or for uh, pulling to the right. The uh, right one has a little bit more angle on it. And the arm looks like it would open more. So I would use right arm trying to scoop the front and left arm to try and scoop the back to the uh, right. But that being said, I would not try this table personally. Yeah, it is, it is very expensive. I mean, keep in mind, I play in live Japanese arcades and it's like 100 yen per try. If you put in 500 yen, you get six tries. Um, some of the more expensive machines is like 200 yen per try with uh, 500 yen giving you three tries. So you kind of get a bonus for the most part. Um, if you go to round ones, though, they don't give you that bonus. It's just 100 yen uh, per try straight up. They don't increase their uh, play cost at all. But they also don't give you the benefit of uh, trying to put in a little bit of more money. Taito stations and most of the other arcades will even transfer your credits to another machine after you've won the prize. So let's see here. So this one would be entirely dependent on how low the claw goes. Um, if it goes down low enough, I would say yes, you could definitely win this one. Um, the only thing I would say, though, is, so, just kind of discussing basics here, um, claw tip is more, uh, angled with the arm as it is, so obviously meant for a little bit more lift, so I would go to the right with that arm, uh, right one has a lot, lot more straight tip, um, does look like the arm opens more, so... You could technically pull, but might be better for pushing. Um, what I would do in this instance is pull the head to the left and try and get the back end to the right. Uh, keep in mind, though, it does look like uh, they've put another bar that's a lot more sticky to kind of guard against you trying to fling it forward. It would depend on how strong this one is. You're going to need vacuum bags and, like, six suitcases if you came here, Christy, too. Don't think we've seen all the configs. Oh, let's see what this one looks like. So, barrier, barrier, wide tip claws, um... So the principle of this one would be to try and uh, either lift it or knock it into the hole. They even packed Kirby in there to try and keep him from causing issues. Let's see how this one looks. Obviously Kirby is going to be a little bit of a problem. So ideally the best way to approach this one would be to knock him on his side. If you can get him knocked over on the side... Especially uh, from his current position, if you can get him knocked forward, um, then you could hook the claw into between the arms of the uh, plushie itself. 
right behind the star is actually the widest opening, believe it or not. Um, I have one on hand, and I can definitely show you guys if need be. Yeah, just so you know, Christy T, when I come back from Yokohama nine times out of ten, I have like three ginormous Taito bags that are like packed full. Um, I could definitely do that at some point. Uh, maybe I could, you know, show you guys prizes and where I would uh, approach it, that kind of thing. Another thing to note is the claws are super bent forward on this one. The claw tips are really wide. Um, this could be a very good machine, but you'd have to have the experience and the knowledge to really approach it right. The hardest part about this would be to try and knock it on its side between the base of the prize itself and everything else, it would be a definite problem. Oh, the uh, Splatoon 2 Sanrio squids. Yeah, I won three of those. Two cinnamon rolls and a Hello Kitty uh, from a uh, Molly Fantasy in a Aeon Mall. I will straight up tell you those machines were such garbage. I managed to win. I'm not even sure what happened there for that person. Probably a mechanical issue or they let go too soon on that backward movement. What the hell? Is that the reset position? Oh, okay, never mind. So this is interesting and this is something you don't typically see with a lot of uh, Torba cranes. Um, I'm curious to see if it'll do it again. This is more common that I've seen in uh, Japanese arcades, but basically they have a preset determined uh, drop zone where if you pick up the prize, it'll go to that area and then drop it um, before moving back to its reset position. Uh, but that's usually for you know special configurations such as this, so... Yeah, I, I'm not sure if they were a Molly Fantasy only type deal. Molly Fantasy is definitely not the best arcade, but those Splatoon squids were definitely a pain in the butt in the machine they had them in. It was um, a standard large metal E-claw, so... Where Kirby is attached to a ball. The hamster ball machines? I've only won one prize from a hamster ball machine live in Japan, and it was a minion. So. David, you're always looking for Dragon Quest stuff. I still have that boulder thing as well. Alright, let's see what they do this time around. I'm curious to see if they'll ever manage to get it knocked over. Yeah, this would this has the potential to be a good machine. What I would honestly do in this situation to try and knock it over is from the back end of the prize, not this side, but the other side, uh, dead center. And then because the arms are angled forward, I would try and aim for right around here. So that way it, number one, pushes the prize that way uh, when it goes down. And number two, it has a chance to lift the base forward to knock it that way. This machine would be a lot better, to be honest, if it had a lot more push, because that would give you the option, a lot more options to try and knock it over. That being said, it has a chance to damage the prize. I'm sure they're not big on that, so... All right, they're dead center. They're not going to get anything out of that. I really, 
I, I think they're just frustrated at this point. Um, I don't think there's any grip tape underneath it, by the way, as well, because it's I have one of these things. They're not exactly easy to knock over. Because it's a uh, piece of card, like cardstock or cardboard, something slightly stiffer in the uh, base. It could be plastic, I guess, uh, in the base to prevent it from falling over too easily. Oh, definitely. If the claw was bigger, it would be cake. If they so these are the standard arms. It looks like. Uh, if they put the large arms on, that would be enough. If it could just be something that could be um, ho hooked underneath if they went directly over. But that would be too easy, so. Yeah, you could try that too. Um, you'd have to go for the openings, though, which the way Kirby is right now would be a lot more difficult because the openings would be on the uh, front or back area uh, or right there. They might be able to get that one right where his foot is. Hand, foot, whatever. If they could stab to right there, that might be good enough. To be honest with you, I hate um, round prizes when I'm trying to win them. This is pretty much as round as it gets. Um, just because they are such a pain in the butt to try and win. Claws just slide off of them. Or they just roll around. They have the highest chance of rolling farther away from the uh, goal. Uh, it's just no bueno. That was a decent stab. I do not think this person is going to win this prize. Not with this setup. Yeah, that that's actually kind of why I wanted to try this live stream is to have a place for people to watch and chat um, about everything. And have good quality video and everything like that. Um, I mean, even if it only starts out small with a few people watching, to be honest, you guys have already exceeded the amount of watchers I expected to have. I was expecting maybe 10, and that was it. <laughs> so let's see here. Let's go ahead and change up the prize. I could definitely do this more often if you guys enjoy this, so yeah. Just think about the amount of times we watch that one person trying to win that one prize at 3,000 TP per, per try. That's uh, it's a little bit depressing. Yep. What do you mean by it's not winnable in the US Vita? No way. Oh, he's got it on the side now. Now this would be a lot simpler. So in this instance, I would try and kind of roll it closer. Uh, try and get the uh, sides up to left and right. That way you can try and get the claw dug into the sides where the uh, stars are. What he could do at this point, honestly, is try and approach it from this angle to try and move it, rotate it a little bit. Because YouTube's better, girl. Ooh, that is 
So close. So close. All right. So <clears throat> I don't know if this person is watching this in any way, shape, or form, by the way. But I would try and stab right there. Right in the base. There's a little bit of a hole. And if this has as much push as I think it would, then it might be able to lodge in there. But I think what they're trying to do is trying to pick it up. Ooh, good rotation. So, and this could also be a really good ta time to use the tactic that I used with the Namazu for a finishing move. Um, if you push on one side to try and lift the other and get the other claw hooked underneath the base, he probably would have a really good chance of winning by like pushing here and then getting it hooked right up underneath the base. Um, another good tactic at this point might be to go as far to the right and try and yank it in by lodging it in the base itself. Um, yeah. That being said, the, the base is connected to the cannon, so it's not like they can go straight down the center or anything. That's all plush attached. I do wish... Torbo would institute an overhead look camera. That would be amazing. Oh, oh, he might have it underneath the base a little bit. Nope. <laughs> Four cannon Kirby's. Jesus, girl. I've thought about doing that, Skittles, but I've never attempted one of those, so I'd have to um I'd have to do a little research. Ooh, he's got it in a real prime opportunity now. So now he can really get into those uh sides. I also don't know how I would process that kind of stuff, so <laughs> uh I have to do more research before I can do, you know, play for me videos and uh, live streams where people, you know, feed money while I play or whatever and then just give away prizes, whatever that may be. Oh! Dang! Ah, <laughs> oh, that's painful. He lifted it up. If anything, I would have like gone around the base uh that's just painful i feel so bad for this person right now how many times has he played in the video time we've come back to the table i i'm oh man i need to like find a way to start doing a counter that way we can kind of keep track of that kind of thing These things are only worth, like, yeah, $38. Um, that's about what they're selling for here in Japan, too, is uh, 3,000 to uh, 4,000 yen. This poor guy. People love the excitement of the wind, though. That's what draws them in, it's just like gambling in that aspect. Oh, oh, he got it back over, though. Very good. All right, so for future note, push on, you know, one side of his head and knock him over. Oh, man. If he could rotate it and then try and lift at the base instead of at the Kirby, that would have been a better idea. Frankly, if the claw was um, facing the other direction, that would also be better. There is uh, some arcades here in Japan that actually have a rotatable claw. So not only can you go front, back, side to side, but spin the claw in a 360 degree angle.
Yeah, we see. <laughs> I would leave too. That 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 would have been my sign to walk away if I lifted it back up, to be honest with you. Oh man. People watching it have increased though. It's up to thirteen now. I wonder how many of that is uh, us watching it. Yeah, I would honestly recommend if you're raging, just don't play. Just walk away. I learned my lesson on that a long time ago. Just, just walk away. It's so much easier. Your Your wallet will thank you. To be honest, another tactic that might work in this instance, pushing. Push right around here on the uh, rim of the cannon, trying to force it that way. Because the uh, cannon's base is definitely higher than the barrier itself. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, man! Oh, that is such a dick move. Oh, they even lifted it. Oh, man, that that is just painful. Yeah, I would push. I mean, come on. He lifted it. He's going for another lift. He's going for another lift. Oh, he's... He's not, the crane doesn't go over to the right far enough. I wonder if that's intentional or if they're just trying to screw people over. I mean, this definitely reminds me of Molly Fantasy. Their machines were just like that. Don't do it, Christy. Definitely don't play this one either. <laughs> Yes, I agree. I would definitely push from like the head or the rim, trying to push it over the edge. That barrier is lower for a reason, and I think it's meant to be pushed. He's already got the the base over the uh, over the rim itself, so if he just pushes it enough, it'll be good. Yeah, that seems about right, Bone Crusher. Um, it's definitely one of those things where some arcades will make that a win. You know, you manage to accomplish a goal that most people can't normally accomplish. Oh, ooh, that's good. That was good. Now, there's a real big risk, though, with what he just did. And that's, number one, knocking it farther away, which he did. And number two, um, lifting it back up onto the base. Um, I will say arcades have started to grow more in Japan, more popular. Um, and after a recent problem, I think it was two or three years ago, in Okinawa... There was a huge scandal with an arcade in Okinawa that was encouraging people to play. Like, customers, they were just egging them on. And um, they were charging insane prices for their pl per plays. They would put things like PS4s and stuff into their cranes. And then be like, hey, you almost got it. And then anytime someone got frustrated, a uh, staff member was supposed to step in and pretend to, you know, move it closer by amping up the arm strength. And then uh, lowering it back down as soon as they gave it back to the customer. Yeah, I mean, in essence, yes, Christy. Um, something you might not be aware of. But gambling is technically illegal in Japan, right? But there's ways around that. So pachinko parlors are basically the equivalent of slot machines here in Japan. They give you metal balls, though, instead of coins or tokens or any of that kind of stuff. 
And what you do is you take the metal balls, you buy a prize, kind of like at Chuck E. Cheese or whatever. And then you turn that prize in at a different shop down the street for money. So it's kind of like a workaround for gambling. Since technically the two shops are two different entities. They buy the prize for a set amount based on uh, what the prize is. And it's things like little stuffed animals, too. So I think that's part of what spawned the arcades that currently exist. Well, it looks like people have given up on that machine. So we're going to go ahead and move on to a different one. Um, also, Vita, you said that the soap dispenser wouldn't ship to the U.S. Did you win one and they said that they won't ship to the U.S.? Because I would dispute that. There's, it's not a food item. There's no flammables. None of that. And then I would definitely dispute that. It's things like this coffee or something like that that I would expect to not be shipped to the U.S. If it's not showing up, go find the replay and dispute it. Um, as far as eye catch is concerned, I, I have no idea what their rules are. So, um, I don't know if I would play any of the cannonball machines as they currently are configured. And to be honest with you, the less that we play on any of the machines that they currently have available, the more likely they are to change configurations just to, you know, get rid of their stock. Uh, did you try searching for soap? Keep in mind, I'm I'm not in America, so I have to um, go off what I can see. It's using my Japanese IP, so. Last few TPW wins on that Kirby show, it poking into the cannon and lifting it up that way. Yeah, that's honestly what I would do, is exactly what you said, Shinako. Um, I don't have any videos of me winning it that way, but after I won the prize and opened it out of the plastic wrap, I did notice there was quite a gap underneath the stars. So, uh, let's take a look at the rocket uh, configurations. Um... See, personally, I hate these configurations. Most of the time, the claw is too weak to actually win. Um, but typically, what you go after on these is the corners of the plastic and not the prize itself. So, specifically, you'd want to offset to the right and then hook underneath this plastic corner here. And then try and get that over as much as you can. Uh, for you that don't know as well, um, the little Kirby is actually detachable from Rocket himself. Uh, he's held on by a button and then two uh, plastic tie tags, um, like what you would see on any kind of thing back in the States that you would buy from that holds the uh, price tag on. And those can be removed without damaging the prize at all. Huh. To be honest, I never really thought about the fact that there would be different things showing up in the American Toraba versus the Japanese Toraba. Yeah. Honestly, Toraba's going through um, some sort of growth phase in regards to both their prizes and everything else. Ooh, if I were if I were to pick a machine, really pick a machine, this would be the machine I would pick. I would either try and lift it from the head where Kirby is sitting and try and move it forward. Um, or I would try and pull him to the side and get him off the side.
It's got wide tips, so good grab no matter what, even if the claw is kind of weak. Um, this is an open package, no plastic wrap type uh, platform. This would be more ideal. And normally I would agree with you, Wuju 2004, but um, these platforms are usually better for prizes that are kind of like oddly shaped. So yeah, I would lift the head of Rocket right where Kirby's sitting, um, and that would be probably the best bet. To be honest, I'm just getting tired of all the plastic on bars uh, and getting screwed over by um, the plastic being stuck to the double-sided sticky tape. I prefer the uh, open prizes most of the time. Miku's an exception to that Ash and Chrome. So Miku's very head heavy, very tiny body. Honestly, she is meant to be a trap when it comes to this kind of a platform. Snorlax is the bane of my existence. I have yet to win any Snorlax at any point in time that's come out. Even live. I just, I cannot win him. So, I'll, I'll tell you why I play sometimes on Torba versus um, in person. So, Torba has a wider variety. Uh, sometimes their configurations do make it easier sometimes. Even though they are more expensive. Um, I also use my free plays, obviously. And uh, with the free shipping, I've also kind of got to get used to a little bit more of Toraba since I'm going back to the States in a couple of months here. So there's, you know, there's certain specific reasons why I do play Toraba. But that being said, most of my prizes I win locally. Unless I find a really good machine on Torba and just farm the crap out of it. Yes, I am part of Torba Prime. Is that available on the uh, US Torba yet? I mean, it's $3 for 10,000 TP, which is $10 worth of TP. So I think it's a fair purchase. Um, I know Torba's president at one point in time said that they intend to... Um, excuse me. They intend to introduce more exclusive things for uh, Torba Prime players. So we'll just have to wait and see. Oh yeah, that's a good amount of lift. I would say this is a good configuration, honestly. I would do that exact same thing that they did, but I would go a little bit higher and try and get right underneath uh, Kirby's butt. That way, number one, um, you might get the tip lodged in there a little bit, so the prize would get stuck on the crane. And try and lift it up over the front platform. Aw, Christy. Ugh. Uh, hang on a second, guys. I've got two TVs, a computer, and a phone running all at the same time on my internet. And it's still awesome. Um, the TP, I do not think, expires, no. Um, I would have to confirm that. I'll pull it up in just a second and we'll actually take a look at it. Apparently, my phone wants to have a seizure right now. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and go to uh, large orders, campaign, everyday tickets, five free plays. Uh, so, Toriba Prime. We'll just go on to mine. How about that? 
So 10,000 TP at the beginning of each month when you subscribe to Torba Prime for 2.99 USD. Uh, for users who are subscribed, uh, blah, 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 blah. A monthly fee for the service will be deducted. Resubscribing to Toro Prime before the next payment date will not incur any additional fees. Uh, TP will not be distributed again when resubscribing. The currency displayed may vary depending on the user's country setting. Users who subscribe to Toro Prime might be ineligible to join ongoing campaigns. For more information on recurring payments, please see the following. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, yeah, it doesn't say anything about expiring, so I would say that, no, it does not expire. Apparently I left my Torba open on the Marshmallow Unicorn, so it was having a seizure. So play tickets to expire, yes. Uh, you can also have TP that does expire, yes. Um, it's just not as common. Usually it's from disputes that that happens, so... I would definitely recommend getting Toriba Prime, in all honesty, especially if you play, um, for two reasons. So, number one, you get 10,000 TP for the price of $3, so that's a good buy, no matter how you look at it. Um, it's 3 bucks every month. That's dirt cheap. Uh, second reason, right? In essence, you are purchasing 10,000 TP. So, regardless of the fact that you're only paying $3 for it, you're purchasing 10,000 TP. As a result, that makes it so that you qualify for the free daily plays. So, uh, where is it? Free daily distribution plays. Having purchased at least 10,000 TP before the distribution. So, this makes you eligible for this daily ticket campaign. So, instead of paying $10 to get free plays every day, you pay $3 to get free plays every day. I will take a look in just a second, Christy. Real quick here. Kirby. Boop. Let's see if I can find this table real quick. Nope. Nope. There we go. Now it's going to take um, forever and a day for me to reserve a table. Thank you. I have a free play ticket, so let's go ahead, shall we? Yeah, that is a very powerful claw. Tell you what, we'll do a 10,000 TP charge. It's 3,000 per try, right? So that means that gives me three tries. We're going to go... Do exactly what I just did. Go a little bit lower. Trying to get Kirby more towards the side. Because now I have that nice little gap right here. And if I can get that thick tip claw. You know, thicker than a bowl of oatmeal underneath there. That's good. Can't tell you how hard it is to 
stare at my phone while playing rather than my TV. All right, now here's where it becomes a problem, right? The claw doesn't go down quite as far as I would need it to to really get into that hole, which makes it a little bit more difficult because I can't get the leverage that I really want. But I know for a fact that Kirby's a little bit more mm, flimsy how, or loose. So let's go ahead and go after him. Oh yeah. Now after three tries, I've already gotten it over the barrier a little bit. And really, th that should be enough. So I'm gonna do, we're gonna do another ten dollar charge real quick just to see if I can win him with this one try next. Alrighty. And we're gonna try and pull Kirby over the edge. You don't want to push him because he's close to the edge. We're trying not to lose our heads. Alrighty. So now we've got a good chunk of him over the barrier. And because of this, he's at a slightly raised area. So I can probably just pull him over. Now the real problem is going to be the fact that Rocket's still pretty well on the uh, platform itself. So we're going to do something a little bit risky and just move it only slightly to the right. Oh yeah, that's good. That's real good. I might, I might be able to lift him off. Um, it's kind of hard to tell because it looks like only part of Rocket's head is over. So that means a good chunk of the weight is still on the platform itself and then if I do knock over Kirby that might be enough to swing him over so we're just gonna give it a love tap to the right and then we're gonna go up and I kind of want to be a little bit more over where rocket is see if we can't get some good leverage and now we face the issue of trying to get Rocket over the edge, right? But now we've got a counterweight of Kirby over there. So, here's the question. Should I approach Rocket, or should I try and push him? I'm thinking I want to try a push right underneath Rocket's chin. Or just try and lift Rocket altogether. We're going to boop the nose. There we go. Nice boop. Ah, he rocked real good. A little bit farther to the left would have been better. And actually, a little bit farther back also would have been good in the aspect that it might have just slid right out of the claw. So let's do another boop. Nope, still too far to the right. Or not far enough back. Poke the butt. I'm going to touch the butt. going with Chicago's uh, suggestion. I'm actually going to kind of poke him right at the leg area. Ah, uh, too much. Sorry, it's a little hard because the angle is a little bit off on this camera. It's a little bit farther to the right than it should be. I think Rocket's a little bit too soft to really poke him. Um, in the butt 
and have it work. So I think we're going to try another boop of the nose. We're going to go a little farther back this time. There we go. Much better. Much better. And that's how you boop the nose. How was that, guys? Did you enjoy that one? Uh, 15 to 20 dollars somewhere in that area it wasn't so I had one free play um, did a 20 dollar charge of all together I still have 3,000 TP so yeah about 15 bucks you're welcome Christy T not too bad guys pretty good that's not too expensive for me um, Honestly, about what I would average for most of my plushies if I was having a difficult time. Now, that being said, when I went to round one, the first machine that I saw was this Kirby Rocket machine. And it was in a uh, triple UFO claw. So it's the same kind of claws we play with on Toraba, but it had three claws, one in the back. And I one-shotted it. So that gives you guys any kind of concept of how my average looks in Japan. Um, the Canon Kirby? Uh, it depends. I'd have to look it up. I don't think Rocket's going for too much. But Kirby's are a popular plushie in general. So let's go ahead. We've done some plushies. Let's see what else we got here. Let's see if there's anything else you guys would like to uh, scout out. Um, I don't think I'm going to play anymore, but that was a really solid table. I would say it was fair, and it was not too disgustingly hard like some of the other ones that I know Christy and I have seen. Well, they came out with a Dragon Ball Cube. I think that was released a couple months ago, actually. Around the same time as the Broly movie, because it's got that Broly insignia on it. Now, I will tell you, personally, I try to avoid some of the Mochi plushies, because... They are just so pliable, it is very difficult to win them. They basically just spring back at you. It's very annoying, even in person. Very, very annoying. Um, we can get a real wheel clock, guys. I actually have this uh, pocket watch, The Last Jedi, this one specifically. I need to sell that. Yeah, not a whole lot in here unless you guys want, you know, some 3D booby mouse pads, you know. Who doesn't like uh, resting their wrist on some good boobies? One Piece is definitely uh, very popular for that kind of thing. Her, Super Sonico, um, all those. Um, I know at one point in time they had a boob squishy that you could win. Uh, vibrators are always on here. Uh, believe it or not, all these things are normally available in real arcades. Uh, the vibrator toys are actually very popular among schoolgirls. I'm not going to get into that. Boop. 
baby petite friend's mascot white. Let's take a look. Do 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 do. I've actually got a full set of these, the uh, Alice Petites. So I'm assuming these are the ones you're talking about. Oh, and they've got the shiny meats out, including the gold and silver. I've actually got a jumbo size of the brown one. Now, I will tell you personally that a lot of the smaller prize uh, machines are usually not too difficult to win. Usually because the investment in them is so little, they don't really care whether or not you win them or lose. Um, the keychains are usually actually what uh, they tend to set up in a little bit more difficult configuration, such as the um, UFO catcher keychains and such since those are only gettable either by purchasing them at an Akiba resale store or um, something like that. Yeah. Um, in this instance, so it's a big head, small body. Um, the claw goes down pretty well. Good lift. I would say that this is actually a fair machine. Very easy. Um, what that person just did was a solid play. If they did it again, it probably would fall right through the bars. Um, but I would offset it a little bit more to the right. I, yes, I have seen that too, Christy. I, I have seen that too. Um, this is another really perfect example of really crooked arms. So, as you can see, these arms are at a huge crook. That angle is just disgusting. So, that means when it lifts up, it's also lifting it backwards. So keep that in mind when you guys approach these kinds of claws. In this instance, there's there's no room to push it to lift it and pull it into the back. There's uh, just enough room to get in between the bars. But my personal favorite would always be to go frontwards. So try and lift it towards the front. Um, that white one in the front, the E prize, looks like it's the easiest one to set up to win right now. I would either offset it to the right and stab it right here, moving it to the, the left a little bit. I, and then you may have to lift it again to get it to fall between the bars by going directly over. Or I would try and offset it to the right, trying to get that corner more dug into between the bars and then hopefully it will fall in. Hmm. That's okay, Sh Shinako. I got you beat. I saw a dude sink $300 into a Chinese electronic uh, Roomba. And that was only the time I was watching. I have one of those Roombas. Uh, just to, I won one to see how they were. They just spin in circles. Yeah, it was disgusting. Petite, petite, petite. And yeah, some, some configurations may not appear for everyone, so just always kind of keep that in mind. Usually the more popular ones that you'll see on the Facebook groups and the Discord and everything are the ones that everyone sees, so... Uh, no, it literally just goes in a horrible circle. It's like, it, it's trash. You could, honestly, if you were an electronics technician or an electrician in general or something, it might be great for a hobby item, something to, you know, use the base model to improve and try and, you know, make it better. But the suction on them is garbage, and really, it's just, it's horrible. What else do you guys want to see? 
I actually need a win one of these at some point for um, a customer, customer of mine. I'm seeing a lot of red bars today. Uh, that's going to be a difficult one. They really need to get right on that corner right there if they're trying to win this. Oh, that's right. They did just release the One Punch Man, huh? Just the other day. Let's take a look at that. It's sad that they just released it, and it's still cheaper than some of the other prizes that have been out for weeks. Just saying. Um, so we'll take a look and see how the strength is on this one, since someone's playing it right now. But uh, I would say this right now is not a bad configuration, considering how low... Or disregard. Com nope. Just don't even play this machine. Claw doesn't go down far enough to even matter. completely avoid that machine oh it went down just didn't go down worth a damn so this one could be good it looks like it goes down far enough um i would offset it to the right and try and hook it right behind the uh part that's already raised a little bit since torba crane arms are real flimsy you could honestly probably stab it right around there on the box and it'll just slide behind and get in there. So what I was originally going to say about the other uh, machine was the fact that um, the bars were really wide on that machine. So that was nice, but that claw was garbage. So Uh, honestly, if I if I want racing Miku, I'll just win her locally. I really need to upload the video of my favorite machine at round one. It's my favorite machine specifically for the fact that um, it's an older machine, number one. And number two, all you have to do is get a plastic shelf in the hole... And it pushes the prize that's inside the cube out, and then you win. Half the time, the thing that isn't strong enough to push the prize or it gets stuck because it's an old machine. But uh, since it gets stuck and it, it'll be in the uh, slat, I uh, win anyways. I just have to get a staff member. It's actually how I won both my Moogles, uh, a Gengar, and a bunch of other things. Only costing me like maximum of 500 yen thank you b show d for this machine this person really just needs to go full on right i'm pretty sure they're not all the way to the right yet i don't quote me obviously because i not 100 percent sure since i'm not playing but if they go all the way right and then just go right about here they should be able to hook right underneath the machine. Um, something else to note is this back bar is a little bit higher than this front bar. Not by much, but the uh, front bar is resting on that little lip, whereas the back bar is at the top of the frame. So that's as far right as you can go. So then if it's as far right as you can go, um, as we saw, it rocked back and it laid flat i would probably go after this corner or right in between the bar and the box right here it's gonna make it lay flat but that's gonna be your best bet since obviously you can't go any farther right you can definitely um poke these boxes but i don't know how beneficial it would be um, that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other machines and we'll kind of come back to this one. I think that was the second one we looked at, so. I hate V, uh, configurations for figures. 
V bars are just not good for any kind of setup. Unless they go down far enough and have a lot of strength. Skittles, I will definitely be uploading that video. I might do that later today. I'm on vacation right now, so I'm just kind of relaxing and having fun. This, do not play this machine. I can tell you right now, do not play this machine. Bar in the front to prevent you from knocking it forward. Uh, black bar and a red bar. That means they're going to be super grippy, even if you do manage to get this box in between the bars. Ah, this is the worst setup I've seen in a while. Wow. Is all I can say. Even if that claw is strong as hell, you're not going to win. Yeah, I'm just enjoying my time before I go back to the States. Now, the problem with this prize, or uh, this configuration, is the front bar is higher whereas the back bar is lower. It would depend on how low the, the claw goes and how strong it is. If it goes low enough, honestly, what might be a good tactic is going as far back as you can and see if it will get on this side of the bar. You'll get hooked on the uh, corners. And you might be able to lift it up so that the uh, bottom of it comes forward. And especially with one of the corners, it looks like being over the bar itself. What's going to happen is the weight over there is going to drop first. So I would offset it to the right a little bit. Yeah, I, I can't tell you, WJU, how often I see a prize stuck in between bars. And it's just, it's never going to move. And they don't reset those very easily on Toraba. That's how they make so much money. People that fall for those tricks. Here in Japan, they reset prizes the moment you walk away, practically. Uh, no, I'm coming back to the States to live. I'm getting out of the military. so, um, And I will be bringing all my plushies with me uh, to sell. I have no doubt that they are going to sell faster than hotcakes. So, especially since they'll be Japanese imports and they costed me nothing to get back to the States. If you guys could see my house right now, I have bags full of plushies right now because I'm trying to do group photo pictures and reorganize my uh, organizational system. Because I won so many things since the last time I bagged them all that I have to redo all of them. So, Well, all the ones that I have are currently sold. Sorry, WJU. But what I will do is I'll keep an eye out for them. Um, I will say the ones that are even on the Japanese Mercury are also expensive. So don't think just because I'm in Japan that makes them cheaper as well. But if I find them in a machine, which I have no doubt they will re-pop up, um, I will definitely do that. Because the uh, other Splatoon squids have already re reappeared. Which Disney mascot, Christy T? The white one that we were looking at earlier? You can share whatever links you want, Bone Crusher. I'm, I'm, as long as it's not porn or any of that kind of stuff, that would be bad. Um, I don't know if my auto filter will kill it or any of that kind of thing, but uh, I can also adjust that. So, Mascot, huh? Mascot. Let's take a look. Which mascot are you referring to? Small cushion. Do 
do do do do do do do do do second one the dreamy mascots Um, well, I probably wouldn't play, because it looks like the crane's glitchy. <laughs> it looks like it's having a spaz attack over in the corner. Let's see here. Dreamy. And it looks like it's the only table right now. So, currently, I would say do not play, because the crane's having a seizure. Uh, but if I were to approach this with the assumption that things are working, um, here's here's your problems. First and foremost, those bars do not have a big enough gap. The only way you're going to get this is if you turn it sideways and get it through the hole that way. Um, even then, you're going to still face the issue of it getting stuck on the double-sided grip tape on the bars. Um, if this were a normal configuration in a live arcade, I would expect it to, if I could lift the prize, then get it over the front bar. Because um, typically in uh, live arcade Japan, they'll, even if you can uh, lift it, what it'll do is it'll take it all the way back to the reset position, then let go, rather than just going to the upright position and then uh, letting go as soon as it gets lifted. Um, I will keep an eye out for them locally, Christy. I will keep an eye out for them locally. Yes, my TP says zero because this is not my account. Uh, BL Robot. It is my account, but it's not my account. This is just for live streaming. Um, this is what I use to um, do my beginner's guide with the uh, five free plays and everything. I could honestly reset this and do a whole new device and all that jazz and get five new free plays if I wanted. Um, that's actually how multi-accounting works, is using that exact method. But um, I don't feel the need to right now. That might be something I look into when I go back to stateside, but until then, I'm not going to worry about it. Yeah, to be honest, I, I'm only vaguely aware of multi-accounting and how it works. I've never done it myself. I know plenty of people that do. I don't blame them with how Toraba's been about their pricing lately. So... Uh, no. Yes and no. So someone's already told me... Sorry, that's my ringtone. That's Ruby yelling for Crow, in case you guys didn't know. Um... Someone's already told me that they saw a machine on their side that wasn't on my side, so... Um, I'm seeing everything from the Japan server side, so... That's how that works. And you would think that the Japan server side would have everything personally, but I guess that's not the case. So yes, I would avoid this machine for the time being. First off, Christy, give it a little while, see if they reset it. Um, I would see how strong it is before going into that. Oh, okay, let's take a look. Baby. Baby, 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 baby. I got so much love in me. Are you talking this one? Because this one's Choco and this one's white.
So yeah, these are two different ones. Um, this is pretty, this is petite. Um, what it probably is is the same. They're probably both petites. And what the problem was is whoever did the translation for it was drunk. All right, so if I were to approach this one, and this is probably one of the better machines that I've seen so far tonight, uh, along with the Kirby Rocket one, I would go for center bar and try and get it to go forward. Um, that or to get it go backwards. You have a lot of open area there. It's on four bars, which means it's less likely to get stuck. You just need average strength on it. So if you guys are trying to win these, I would definitely say this is a good uh, set up. Uh, I think you joined a little afterwards, BL Robot, but I won a Kirby uh, ro riding rocket plushie on a different table. Um, it was a really fair table, to be honest with you. Is his name Rick? I thought his name was Rocket. For, yeah, so what I would focus on is, um, this is going to entail a little bit of visual, visualization, but you want to be just past the corner that's over here, right? So you can kind of see it right there. You want to be just past that, so that way when it lifts it, it throws it a little bit more forward. Your other option, and this is a lot more practical when it comes to small prizes, is to actually use two prizes as a point of leverage. So, and what that means is to basically center over these two prizes and then try and pull the bottom end of the A prize to the right. This usually will mess up your E, but if you're, uh, it, it depends on what one you're going after, right? So if you're after A or if you're after D or if you're after E. Yes, the hamster BL robot. Because then once you shift um, the bottom of this forward, the plastic should be hanging off of the uh, front bar. And then you just kind of got to throw it over. Go for it, dinosaur, dinosaur Roar. I'm here for you. I'll help you out as much as I can. Uh, that's the whole reason I started this YouTube channel is for you guys. I can win these. <laughs> I can win this stuff all the time. I literally do. So, like, if you saw my house, you would think I was a hardcore weeb which isn't a lie, but it's not the same either. I just like to help people out, to be honest with you. And if I can get enough subscribers on this YouTube channel, I will just start giving my prizes away. If I can get monetized by YouTube to just play U Toribo all day, I will just give my prizes away and not care whatsoever. So the problem with swiping the corners in the back is that'll put them almost dead center on that center bar, which screws you over in so many ways. Um, if you try and throw the prize forward, you'll end up with the side stuck in the the front two bars. If you throw the prize backward, you'll en end up with it sitting upright that way. So that's why you kind of want to swing it forward. If you're going from the right to the left, then yeah, you could do the back corner. But if you're going from left to right, do not do that. If you're going left to right, make sure you're approaching the bottom, not the not the back end. So after, if you can get this to go straight uh, along the bars, then I would try and approach at the head. 
specifically the head because that's going to be where all your weight is right and that should throw it forward you don't want to go too far back but you don't want to go too far forward because the body will be too light and you'll just end up throwing it backwards and getting it all kinds of messed up but if you throw it just where the weight is we'll have to see how you get it first but uh then that should throw it frontward it's all about finding that key balance point. Feel free to go through and play. I am watching you and I will help you as much as I can, bud. Okay, uh, a little bit forward. See, and that's that's why I, what I was specifically referring to. If you went too far forward and you went right to left, that's going to happen. And then if you try and lift it now, it'll get stuck sideways in these bars. So, um, I did not pay enough attention to see how far it opened, but... Hopefully you were paying enough attention while you were playing. You want to get the bottom of the A towards that. And what you really want to focus on doing with that is getting past this corner. You want to be just past it. And yeah, you can always hit the charge TP, pull up your computer, and go to your play history, and then rewatch what you did. I mean, that is always an option available to you guys. I fully encourage having both your phone and your computer available with login and everything. So that way you can go to play history, review what you did, and then be able to, you know, go through and see what you did to actually win something. So, definitely a useful tool for you. That way you still have the reservation on the table, but you also um, have time to think, breathe, do whatever you need. Take a, take a whiz, you know. I know, and I do wish that they would expand it to include both cameras or allow for interchanging since uh, they use Twitch cameras that is capable of happening and they're using Amazon as their server. So, but maybe that's why they're charging so much as they're trying to focus on more uh, features. I know that they do want to do a staff call button on the, the machines. Um, their president announced that at one point in time, but it's, they're just so undermanned. While we wait for that, boop -ba -doo -ba -doo. yes, I am still listening. Sorry, I uh, I like to listen to music while I play, so whatever the game may be. Let's find a song to listen to. Yes, I do love cover bands. Because I can only stand so much. Uh... Okay, so it does not open very much. I wonder who else is in the queue with you. 
So now you just kind of got to adjust. Um, since it doesn't open very much and we don't really, we haven't evaluated how much lift it actually has. You could also go directly over A and see what you get um, and still just approach it right about where you're at right now. So usually the problem with plastic wrapped things is exactly what happened to you. Um, it kind of gets caught on just the edge of the plastic and that, yeah. Yeah, it does not go down very, for, very far. Um, let's, well, if it's not you, then we get to watch somebody else attempt it. Another awesome tactic with small prizes is pushing. There's a lot of push tactics that I've used for things like keychains and such. Okay, that's good. That's nice and straight, nice and center. Now here's the problem with what they've got though. Um, they've got only a little bit of the plastic on this front bar, which is going to cause them a little bit of a problem. What I would honestly try is, depending on how good the lift is, maybe attacking that area right there, seeing if it lifts it up, and then uh, maybe moves it forward. And that's exactly what I was worried would happen. Now, here's another thing, though. So this claw is pretty low. They might be able to just go too slightly to the right of it. Let's see here. We're going to see if this works. Okay, so that corner is up enough that it touches the claw when it goes to the return position, so that could be a tactic that you use. Um, the problem, though, with it is, is I don't think that it goes low enough that that's going to be viable, specifically for the fact that it's just down so far. Um, pushing that's not also not going to result in anything good. I don't think that it has enough push or goes down low enough that that's going to work. Uh, let's go dead center and see what we get. Yeah, definitely think it's stuck, no matter how I look at it. Um, there is another tactic that you could use if you approach it from the side. Um, you can see that it's leaned forward a little bit. You might be able to push that down. But it's going to be risky. Especially with how wiggly this is. But it should work. Dino, are you in line? Alright, here you go. I wish you the best of luck. Because I'm the one that did that for you. Do exactly what I just did. Try and push that front end. <laughs> yes, stab the back of the head. You want to go right where that corner is. Um, you kind of want to focus where the head is because that will give you the most leverage. Right where my cursor is is where you want to approach. You shouldn't really have to go much to the right, if at all. I would just give it a love tap and then go straight back to right there. Yes, exactly what BL Robot said. There. All right. And then do that maybe one more time. Um, 
you can go exactly where my claw or where my cursor is um, and you should hopefully get it unlodged Again, just a love tap to the right, and then go back just enough to get over the uh, prize. You want to focus where the head is and push down. Not a problem, Dino. I'm all here to help you. I mean, I just spent three plays worth trying to help you out, so why not? I could set up a voice chat server for you guys. Um, and we could do this more regularly. I do like to watch other people play, and I love helping people out, so. Feel free to share this with your friends. I'm, I'm all about this. I'm trying to become a bigger YouTuber so that I can help more people. I don't forget the little people. It's not who I am. Not by a long shot. I will uh, work on coming up with a Discord for Crane Train and then invite you guys to join me in voice chat for live streams. So that way we can enjoy this a lot more casually and just have fun with it. In case you guys hadn't really noticed, I don't really show my face in any of my videos. I'm not one of those people that likes the camera, number one. And number two, I'm not all about being seen. I know you guys come here for the prizes. You don't really need to see me. That's not what this is about. I'm not trying to get famous for how I look. I, it's all about how good of a quality can I do. Oh, one more push. One more push. That's all you need. Exactly what you just did. It almost came free in that one. Stephanie, that doesn't surprise me at all, knowing you. Oh, you're so close. You got this, man. You got this. I would go just a little bit farther back, kind of focus on where the A is. So right where my cursor is is where you kind of want to get. We believe in you, Dino. We're here to support you in your addiction of little plushies. Yeah! Nice job, Dino. Nice job. See, even after it got in an area that we all thought it was stuck, we still managed to win it. Now, I would definitely uh, stop there. Don't go after E. If you did want to go after another one, I would go after D, but definitely not E. So you just won A, so that's this little guy right here, right? Congratulations. Believe it or not, Dino, I call everyone girl. Girl or dude, I don't, I don't really care what your gender is. Usually it's just what I say. I go to work and I call all the dudes because I work in an almost all male environment and I'm like, sup girl? I kid you not. I've actually got one dude that was not happy about me doing that and he was like call me girl one more time and watch what happens and I was like alright man, I got you. Chill out. Well, I don't know about that, but I definitely am just trying to help you guys out. I like seeing other people succeed. It's what I'm all about, so. Alright, guys. What do, you do, what do you guys want to do next? I 
I'm just sitting here enjoying an adult beverage and helping y'all out. Mmm, Japanese adult beverages. Don't judge me. I know it's like... Crap, what time is it? 7.37 in the morning? But I'm on vacation! By the way, if you guys would like, I can put this music so that you can hear it. I just figured you didn't want to hear the music while I talked as well, so. Oh, where's my thing? Blue stacks, there you are. <laughs> David, when I read that, I instantly thought of these guys. The claw. I have been chosen. I shall go on to the promised land. Dino, I don't know what a s normal sleep schedule is. Like, I've been in the military for nine and a half years. Before that, I was a temp worker working. I've worked 27 different jobs before my military career. All different shifts, mid, swings, everything. So... I haven't known a normal sleep schedule in <laughs> roughly 12 plus years. <laughs> um, okay, so Mary Baby, if this is the one you guys want, we can take a look at these. So, honestly, if I were... Uh, if it weren't for that brown bar in the front, this would be perfect. Without that brown bar, you could probably just lift it up into the uh, front end. That's how I've won a few prizes, actually. Uh, would you guys like to see some of my win videos? Just straight up, I can go to the win videos. Yeah, back out of this, because I can only stand so much Torba music at a time. Skittles, I believe that having kids is definitely not going to make your sleep schedule any kind of normal. Here, let me go... Do, 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 do. Obtain prizes history. Do, 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 do. Um, I know Christy heard me talking about this. Um, plushy the last night. He was really stuck, and, uh, I saw people keep attacking him from this side, and it was just horribly painful to watch them try and win this. And, as you'll see, it was not that difficult. <clears throat> Whew, I need to put on some air conditioning. Boop. Just sometimes, you just gotta boop the nose. Um, if any of you watch Ruby, just listen to Nora and boop the nose. Um, I won quite a few Lucarios the other day. I went on a nice little win session for them. Sorry if you guys hear a lot of wind, my AC. I just turned on my AC and it started blowing at me. <laughs> I was starting to sweat a little, so. That was a shark, Christy. A shark. Get it right. Gosh. Whale poop. Got you. So, I won quite a few of these Lucarios. Um, the thing with Lucario is, is go after the feet. Offset it to the right and go after the feet. It was the easiest way to, uh, win him, honestly, on multiple machines. Whoop. Sometimes, you know, you gotta play a little footsie. It's okay.
That said, I, I won Lucario, not on just one machine. And yes, I did a lot of booping that day. Sometimes you just got to boop the side, boop the butt. Um, that was that particular video is a perfect example of some really good luck in regards to some things, as well as um, how you can use offsetting the crane to your advantage. And then I won another Lucario on that same first machine doing pretty much the same thing I had been doing is just playing a little footsie and giving a little poke. I will say this was probably my most expensive uh, plushie in a while. I'm not going to go into details how much I spent, but I will say it was greater than $40. Because he is just so enormous. So he was a loss as far as profit is concerned for winning him. But, you know, he's going to be huge. I will definitely let you know how soft he is, David. Oh, I saw someone sink easily $150 into this machine the other day. Oh, man. This was so painful. They had no concept of how to approach a prize that was at an odd angle whatsoever. They kept attacking it from the right side here and going to the back, and they just could not understand why they could not win it. And it was driving me batty. Um, you might question that, David, when you get the turtle. The turtle is so soft. So soft. He's not as mochi feeling, but he's so soft you're just going to fall asleep on him. Yes, Christy T. The marshmallow whale is exactly what he's talking about. He's David's bought two from me. I literally watched... so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit play on this again real quick. So I literally watched someone consistently poke this corner over and over and over again and then try and continuously swoop the back to the right. And that was the only two tactics they continuously tried. Easily sinking $150 into this one cushion. Those are the most painful things to watch. And all they had to do was just... Look how little I moved the crane to the right. I won it one shot right after he stopped. If you're having issues with a prize, walk away, guys. Set a limit to walk away at. Know that... You're going into this with the possibility of losing money, just like any kind of gambling. The first time I went to a casino, I went in there with $200, and I was like, I expect to not walk out with this money. And I did not. I had a blast. I was there with a couple of guys, and we just gambled it all away, and I didn't really care. I had a blast. I went there for the experience. It was my first time going to a casino, so... I also saw someone struggling with this, nowhere near as bad as this one was, but uh, someone struggled with this, and really, I just used the other prize to my advantage to kind of move things around. This was a really strong claw, too. I agree, Hot Pink Justice. If you can avoid playing from reset, unless you have the knowledge, like, use your free plays if you're going to try something from reset, right? Um... 
Hang on, let me see if I can find it. I've got a perfect example of that. So I had a free play, and I was after that same cushion that that one person sunk $150 into, right? But I already had the knowledge and the experience to go ahead and win this. So I already saw that this claw was strong. All I had to do was hit it in the right area. So with these Nemo Neko cushion cushions, obviously this table is not here anymore, but with these Nemo Neko cushions, if you get it right here, just to the right of the left ear, or right ear, I guess, if it's his right, your left, um, it'll lift up and fall forward. I can't tell you how many times I've won prizes that way with just something as simple as that. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So watch as it opens. It's got a lot of strength. It goes far down and gets lodged right in the crooks of the arms, lifts up, and then just rolls forward. No big deal. I used a free play to win that. I watched the table. I learned what I needed. And then I executed. This was a one-time free play. I did not invest a bunch of money. That was from reset. I went to right here. So if you look at my cursor, I went to just past uh, his the center of his head. Because you want to go far enough back that when it lifts, um, it has the weight shifted forward. But you also want to be in an area with good leverage. So since the ear per, uh, kind of dips in right there at the head and the head kind of slopes up right here and curves, I knew that this was my optimal area for leverage. And the big key factor to this, and I'll show you again, guys. The key factor to this was actually the fact that the crane goes down really far. So look at the crooks of the arms and watch. It goes almost all the way down, lodges underneath the prize, and as a result, lifts it up. These are things that come with experience. I am not going to go into detail how much money I have invested into getting all this experience, but my house speaks for itself. Um, but definitely, it helps to have the knowledge. That's what I'm trying to imbue you guys with, is the knowledge. Here's some other good free one-time plays. I, all these are one-time plays when I was just playing with my uh, free play tickets, right? So, Frieza. Um... I go after this A prize that someone had set up and they just obviously gave up at some point. But the uh, prize is already on the lower end of the bar. So all I had to do was just dislodge it. Offset to the right. The reason why you do the right is because the opening is to the right. And the corner on the right-hand side is farther down than the left side. I go back past the bar. And as a result, that actually gives me more leverage. So go back past the bar. I'm going to get right about here. Right underneath the corner. Lift and boom. Feel free to shoot me a message if you guys are having a hard time with a me with a, a configuration. I will do what I can to help you out. Um, this was another good free play win. Someone had walked away from this. Um, what you can't see over here is how the plastic was sitting on the back. Uh, again, it would be nice to have side views. So, um, what I learned was from someone else attempting it is that the head was the good point of leverage because it rocks. So watch. Even though the claw closed a little earlier than it should have, it got good leverage right underneath the chin, lifted, and boom. Frankly, this one was the easier of the uh, ones to win because 
this was a reset position. This dragon air was just sitting here at reset. Um, I tried to duplicate this and I think they weakened it or the uh, plastic shifted too much on it because I could not get underneath the prize enough to make this work. But all I did was go and did what I did with the Nianko um, cushion. Go just past halfway. Unfortunately, it did get caught on the plastic, but it lifted it and then it fell through. So if you look at this, right? Because of the closing strength of the claw, it got on both corners and it fully lifted the prize because the plastic became lodged on the claws. See? And it only fell, honestly, because it came loose off of this corner. I will say there is no greater investment in your Toraba addiction than for you to get Toraba Prime specifically so that you can get the free daily ticket plays. That's $3 for a free play every day. There's even a technique, if you're smart, that you can get two free plays per day up to and including five free plays in a day um, if you know how to work it right. Agreed. That is exactly what I would say, Hot Pink Justice. Good, good on you. And if you have a corner that's already off of the bar, go for that. Hello Kitty and Rilakkuma tote bags. Let's take a look at tote bags then. Shall we? Tote. Totes, man. Totes. Let's take a look. These ones? Let's take a look. All right, so first off, they're folded, so that makes them thicker. So that also makes them stiffer. That's a good thing, honestly. Um, what I would do is what I would uh, go just past this corner and see if you can't lift it forward. Um, for the B bag, let's see, how would I approach that? I would probably go right about halfway up the B and try and lift it there. This all depends on if there's enough lift. Now, if it doesn't have a lot, a lot of lift, but it has a lot of push and it goes down far enough, what you could try is stabbing the corner as well. Um, I have 6,000 TP. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like, shall we? Sound like a plan, Skittles? <laughs> there it is. Alright, pulling that up on my phone. Alright, so I'm going to leave the side view up for you guys while I go ahead and try this. I'm going to go after A, and we're going to see how much lift it is. The claws have a decent amount of angle on them, so I'm expecting decent lift. Hopefully this claw opens up a decent bit. It opens up a lot. So yeah. I'm going to try let's see 2000 per try. I am going to do I'm going to try and sweep the front end of it to the right and see what we get. How about that? It's 
Sorry, my phone camera lagged a lot there. Yeah, that's also kind of what I'm thinking, Sh Shinako. Um, let's actually test that real quick with B. So, I don't know if there's a difference between the rainbow bars in any way, or if they're just decorative. But let's try and shift B to the right side a little bit, and then we will try and lift it up. That B is really stuck on that bar. You could see that it lifted up a little bit, but the plastic didn't want to move, so. I want to go after A a little bit more. Hmm. So the reason why it lifted so much the first time is how the plastic and how stiff it is at the uh, top of the packaging for A got kind of caught on the tip itself. So we're going to try one more time, Skittles, and what I'm going to try and do is what I did the first time out of sheer curiosity. I would say weak claw, but I think it's just really sticky bars. So, yeah, I would agree it is. It is probably a no-go right now. I would just watch the table and see if someone gets um, it closer towards the front bar and then do what I did to try and lift that back end up more. I don't know if the left side seemed stronger, the right side seemed pretty strong. Let's see. Music, music, music. Boop doop doo. I watch a lot of um, AMVs because I find that they definitely have a lot of uh, music in them that you wouldn't normally listen to or nor you wouldn't normally find. Some people have some other tastes than you, so it makes it a lot easier to branch out as a result. Skittles, don't let that get you down. But what I would say is stick to free plays for a while until you get used to things. It's the safer bet. It's definitely less costly. Um, you get bonus free plays on the 10th and the 20th. So, I mean, that's three free plays. It used to be four back before they changed everything. So... I'm here to help. Here to help. You really have to also examine the prizes that you're after. There's sometimes going to be exploits that you don't think about normally because you're not used to that thought process. I'm always thinking out of the box. Um, a perfect example of what I do. And I'm going to show you guys why I play the way I play. Hero-kun TV is the exact reason... For the way I play. 
So we're going to watch a quick YouTube video together, guys. And I want you to understand this dude is the inspiration for how I got into Crane Games, number one, and how I s approach things the way I do. This is one of his older videos, so keep this in mind. But um, And he's got even more older videos. This dude doesn't even go after the prizes nine times out of ten. Seven million views on this alone. You know what this guy does? Some outrageous stuff. Ping pong? How about I just do the whole thing? That's one way to win. This guy is my inspiration. Half the time, he goes after stuff that doesn't even give him profit. He wins like little signs in the in the machines and stuff like that. He also goes after prizes a way I would have never thought. You thought you choked on your water just now, Christy. Wait till you see some of the other things he does. He's going after display prizes. His his YouTube is Hero Coon TV. I highly recommend you guys watch him. He is what got me thinking the way I do. Obviously, a lot of the things that he does can only be done in Japan, but it's very useful information, regardless. He considers that a win. Even though the point of this was to uh, get those little prize tickets, and then you'd have to open them and decide whether or not you win. No, he does not win the soccer ball, but man, does he try. <coughs> Excuse me. I know. I've seen a few people actually knock uh, display prizes down in their replay videos in Torba, and it's so sad that you can't win the display prizes. This Snorlax is a perfect example of amazing things to do in Crane Games. He doesn't just go after the Snorlax, he goes after the machine, the frame, the setup. And knocks the lower bar off of its mounting. Then he proceeds to win the prize. Yes, something I should point out to you guys. Also, if you ever come out to Japan, you know how a broken claw on Torba is amazing? Don't do that in Japan. The machines will error out and prevent you from playing. They have trip sensors for things like that. Torba uses a proprietary crane, so it actually bypasses some of the interlocks that normally occur in uh, these cranes. In that prize he just won you were meant to go through the hole to knock off the uh prize he totally bypassed that in this machine he doesn't even go after the prize he wants the sign He goes he he has this fascination with signs and crane games. I'm not sure what it is specifically, but he loves to win them. He considers it a win as long as he wins that. He'll sometimes go after the prize afterwards, but he 
he's more after the he's more interested in the signs. There's there's no reason he wants the sign except for just to prove a point that he can just win whatever he wants. Uh, I am going to see if this is the video I think it is. Yes, this is the video I think it is. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit here, guys. I want you guys to see something hilarious. <clears throat> so in Japan, they have all kinds of weird display items, um, you know, scenery and stuff like that. In this one, there is a lattice in the background. And this guy proceeds to pick up the lattice and drop it in the chute. Also, as you can see, this is one of those cranes that actually turns and rotates. I really wish Toribo would get one of those. And then he proceeds to just play with this. So this guy is my inspiration for how I approach prizes. Because he does not approach them the same way that other people do. He actually display prize that's just being stored in the machine at the bottom. Nope, he is going to go and win that. I highly recommend watching these. They are super entertaining. They're very enjoyable. And you will just die laughing at some points. I guarantee you. So... There is all kinds of fun to be had just watching his videos. Definitely recommend Hirokun TV. Is there any other prizes you guys would like me to take a look at? I knew there was a Suma Kagaroshi fan in here somewhere. This actually might not be a halfway decent prize to try and win if you can get it hooked around that corner there. As far to the right as you possibly can, though. Um, Suma Kagaroshi, huh? Let's take a look here. Any particular prize? Uh, I have no set time. I'm probably going to stop soon, but um, at the same time, this is just kind of my first cursory attempt at streaming and seeing the response in general from it, seeing what you guys enjoy, and just kind of building on my next stream. Macaroons, huh? What, the Disney squishy cupcake ca macaroons? I mean, I can just look up macaroon, I guess, in general. I actually covered uh, Hello Kitty bread in my tutorial for beginners. Um, it was a different machine, obviously. I wonder how far this even goes back. So it's got a grip bar at the bottom, but it's not really in a place that wouldn't matter because it's right up against the platform. The real question is, is there any grip tape on these uh, tiles? And then how strong is the claw? 
I would probably off center to the left and try and go out with the right claw after the bow ear to try and get more leverage. Let's see. Sorry, I do apologize if I spell this wrong. Sumi. Let's just do Sumi and see what I get. All right, Sumi, Kagoroshi. Are you talking these uh, macaroon cushions? I actually saw these things live in a uh, crane. The A prize might not be too bad to try and win. It's already at an odd angle. Um, I would kind of go about halfway past, just a little bit past the A. So like right to the point of the A. Um, I would probably leave it where it is. So just give it a love tap to the right and see if we can't move it either to the side to fall in between the bars or see if it'll lift it enough to uh, throw it forward. Typically with something this rounded on the sides though and being so slick because of the plastic wrap that it's wrapped in, it's not going to lift it. Um, another thought is giving it a love tap and then to the side and then just a little bit forward so that way you can kind of hit that front area that's just right off the bar and see if you can't push it. There's a big one too, huh? So let's see. Oh, these ones. The 40 centimeters. Let's take a look at those real quick. Ooh, do not play this. So th there's advantages and disadvantages to this. It might actually not be as bad as I think. So it's got a decent angle on the claw. So you might be able to roll it towards the uh, center. That grip bar is going to be a bit of a pain though to try and get over. Uh, but round prizes, you're not going to get much leverage off of. If I do approach this, I would pretty much... I would go to... You want this elbow to be right about in line with that T on the Toraba back. And then um, should open far enough. And then I would go right about here. Specifically because this end is uh, a little bit farther back. You kind of want it to be more even. Because then you have more chance of it rolling. Sword Art Online Wolf figure. There's a Sword Art Online Wolf? I don't even know that there is a wolf in Sword Art Online. Are you talking this? Are you talking about Sinon? Her? She's a cat. Let's see. Let's take a look at what kind of configuration she's in. Do 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 do. That's the reset position. Um, claws are pretty straight, so probably not going to have much under leverage. Um, bum 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 bum. In all honesty, it might be better to just push on this corner and see what you get. See if it might, you know, rotate a little bit towards the um, the hole uh, for that one. Uh, the sauna figures are, for some odd reason, becoming very popular. This is a bad setup no matter how I look at it. So the claws are angled um, kind of like forward. So if you are going to approach this, approach it from the front because you're going to get more leverage from that because when it goes up, it's going to go back. Um, typically, you have to off-center these a little bit to try and get any kind of progress, though. So I try to avoid those whenever possible. 
Not to mention the box was wrapped in plastic, so that's also a problem in and of itself. Um, this one would depend on how far back the claw goes and how much grip it has. So it's got the grip tape on it, so I imagine it's got plenty. Um, honestly, I would try to stab it right around here because these will typically uh, force the claw to go around because of the grip tape on them. And then once it goes around, it'll lift it and move it sideways a little bit uh, with the rubber band configuration. Overall, not seeing some very good configurations for her. But if I were to try, I would try and push on the corner of this one. That would be my advice. See if you can't get it to rotate the back end of it since the top part of the box should be lighter. Uh, try and get that to go towards the hole. The problem is if it falls at an angle in any way, I would probably say you're going to have a lot harder of a time. Christy, almost everything in here is plastic. Let's be real. I'm actually a little surprised the sword and shield sling bags are still available. This came out a little while ago. Hmm. It's going to be flimsy, so I wouldn't expect much progress out of that. No problem, Misa. I know a lot of people love SAO and all that jazz. It's just you got to find them in a good configuration. Yeah, it's always nice to find things randomly that you'd forgotten about in general. Let's take a look at figures again. <sighs> hmm. I wonder how far it goes down. The bottom of this prize is definitely heavy, so I would almost push it at that end. If not, I would push it right there, so that way, worst case scenario it still slips inside the uh, plastic ring and pulls it to the side. Darth Vader, huh? I've seen it in person. It's a very small figure. There was a much larger figure that I actually sold one to um, a while back. Let's take a look here. This one's going to be pretty bottom heavy because of the cape, so it probably has a lot of weight on the back end. This probably wouldn't be the best setup depending on how low that crane goes. This is a horrible setup. I would not attempt this at all. That space that you need to get Darth into is very small and the bars on the sides are preventing you from going either other direction. Do, 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 do. They've been loving these configurations lately. Um, I would say try this configuration. And what I would do is I would go as far right as possible, obviously. And then I would try to get right around here. Right where that line is on the box. Just above the star. Because what's going to happen is it's going to lift it up at an angle and it's gonna try and move the bottom end of the box towards the opening. Obviously that's gonna be more prominent the farther up you go, but that also means that you have to be able to get it underneath the box to make it worth anything. Yeah, that's kinda what I was expecting, hot pink. Uh, the big Darth Vader I won back in the day, I won from a ping pong ball machine on Sega Arcade, or Sega Online Catcher for a customer. Uh, I made no money off of that. So, with this one, I would definitely go as far right as possible, and then maybe in line with the, the line on the, just above the star, or in line with the, uh, the purple D-ring.
I have contemplated buying um, a set of the tension bars since I am here in Japan and some sticky double-sided sticky tape and then setting up things to show you guys how I would approach things IRL you know give you a better perspective of things like where the weight sits in the figure so on and so forth There's just so much to discuss when it comes to playing these games. I could spend all day talking about these and still not cover everything. Mm, last time I tried this claw, it was fairly weak, even though the claws were pretty nice on it. Be nice if they'd get rid of those barrier bars. That stuff's starting to become more prominent and really starting to annoy me, honestly. Uh, I think we are winding down for this stream session. Three hours, I think, is definitely a good amount of time for my first streaming. Uh, I will talk to you guys about doing this again. It may happen in the next couple of days. Um, I'll post it on my Facebook page. You guys can follow that. Uh, share this with your friends. I'm more than willing to help you guys out as much as I can. So, But I think I'm going to call it here gonna go get some uh, lunch and uh, you know relax for a few before I get back to work on some other stuff that I was already in the process of doing before I found this distraction of mine so thank you all And uh, I will see you guys next time, all right? We'll see if we can't make this more of a regular thing, even if it's just casual. And stay tuned for some of my other videos, guys. I'll talk to you later. Now, if only I can figure out how to stop. <laughs>